Alessandra Fenyo Marken issued a statement, which we're going to get into shortly. Yes, he but did. let me welcome uh, Martin Pebo, his private legal practitioner, one of the foremost human rights lawyers we have in this country. Council, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Yes, evening. Hello? Hello, lawyer Martin Pebo. While we try to reconnect with lawyer Martin Pebo right now, I'm just reminding you as well that we're live on 3 FM 92.7. Now, can you hear me now, Council? Yes, I can hear you. Perfect. Now, while we await the, the details and also the, the full ruling of the justices of the Supreme Court on this matter by tomorrow midday, all things being equal. For the Attorney General, to the extent that this incident of cross carpeting could happen again in the future, it was very necessary that the, the Supreme Court interprets and rules on Article 97.1 GNH to bring finality, so called, to this matter. Is it one that you agree with? Uh, not, not exactly. You see, the circumstances under which this case went to the Supreme Court are different. In this particular case, it was so, so, so clear that these persons had uh, cross carpet. So the case would have gone to the High Court. So I don't particularly agree with him, except that, like I keep saying, because in law, we have different schools of thought. Mm -hmm. They are using the, their own school, and they belong to that school of thought. That's how can they will say it's good it went to the Supreme Court. Hello? The, the normal way, considering the fact of this case, would have been for it to go to the High Court. And that's if the High Court died, felt that they are not matter to the Supreme Court under Article 130, Clause what, 2. So the Attorney General is happy, but that, that shouldn't be right. We don't develop a democracy this way because these facts are clear. Look, today as we speak, a CMI is MPP. Today as we speak, Kojo Asante of the MPP filed to be independent contrary to Article 39 of fails a candidate for parliamentary elections, and you also feel you yourself, you also file as an independent, you lose your seat automatically. Automatically, right? So the same for Cynthia, ma'am, lay more recent. Okay, so this thing is so clear, but you know, uh, they, they ran to the court because they know that President Kufuado was careful in selecting. <laughs> Uh, Supreme Court judges for appointment, people who are like-minded. So they chose that forum so that quickly they'll get a decision in their favor. I see. But the provisions of Article 97.1 GNH, from uh, the understanding that I've got over the period that this matter has been traveling, are designed, counsel, to safeguard the principles of party loyalty and some sort of political stability. So if, if this... 97.1 GNH cannot check cross carpeting, then which law can in our books? Good. So what it is is that the historical meaning being put on 97 GNH, yes, I appreciate it. But if that's all that it meant, the lawmaker or the uh, listen, framers of the constitution would have stated so expressly. But where well, they haven't done so. This means if the, uh, the framers of our constitution meant it to just mean, oh, just crossing uh, physically in the chamber from one side to the other, they would have stated so. But that's not the meaning at all. And if you go even to the... Um, uh, what do you call it, the consultative assembly proceedings. As you see that that's the very limiting it to what uh, some people are seeking to say, that it is only when you physically cross from one side of the uh, chamber to the other side, that's from one party to the other, that's from majority to minority or vice versa, that is when it applies. That's not true. If you read where the law may 
was making them No, 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 and unfortunately, we have a, a jerky connection to uh, Martin Pebble, private legal practitioner there. But, uh, you know, the Speaker of Parliament, Aban Sumana Kinsford Bagman, right on about himself, has been also espousing a position on 971 JNH, which was the subject matter of interpretation at the Supreme Court, which the Supreme Court has given a ruling, and, and, the, and the futuristic implication of the decisions taken by these persons, the four of them, in the eye of this storm. But, Alexander Fenyomakin has also been talking after this, issued a statement, and it has a tone. Dennis? Yes, so um, the majority leader has issued a statement, and it's in reference to the ruling by the Supreme Court. In that particular statement, he's calling for a truce. He's calling for cooperation from the other side of the House. That, given that the Supreme Court has determined this matter, now they need to work together in the interest of Ghana for the people that they represent. But many have been asking questions that the tone of this letter is different from what we hear him say in his previous commentary, especially mm. um, there was an instance where he actually accused the Speaker of conspiring with the NDC caucus in Parliament um, on certain matters. Let's take a listen um, to that particular sound clip. Speaker is setting the country on fire. Yes. Yesterday, we, we, we were disappointed with his non-reconciliatory posture. posture during this press conference. Indeed, we, the majority caucus, call on Mr. Speaker one more time to demonstrate statesmanship. We want Mr. Speaker to know that although we were not happy on the day he was elected, some of our colleagues perhaps has seen something good in him. It wasn't the NDC that put him there for him to do the bidding of the NDC. Perhaps people felt that he could be someone who would bring all of us together. Yes. There are things that we cannot say into the camera. But Mr. Speaker is hurting democracy. Yes. What Mr. Speaker is doing is to rehearse what the NDC is likely to do should they lose power, to bring chaos, to cause confusion. How can Mr. Speaker say that he respects the constitution but he will not subject himself to the dictates of the judiciary? How can you say that the judiciary is, is, in, is in collusion? is colliding with the president and you mentioned the president as a person as an individual how well so that that that, that was prior to today yes it, it had a certain context and, and then there's and, and even one. yesterday there was another sound clip where um he had made comments to the effect that the mpp is bleeding under the speaker i mean clearly that's mm. when you put all of those things together and now contrast it with what we are seeing today by way of this statement um, this certainly is with a softer tone and a more persuasive argument, I mean, sorry, um, uh, statement, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. So parts of it reads that while we are with the court's full written reasoning, its, its decision on this constitutional question is clear and binding. The constitution does not grant the speaker the power to declare parliamentary seats vacant. This is a restatement of what he thinks, uh, uh, his view on the law. Now he goes on to say that the Supreme Court's decision should not be seen as victory for one side or a defeat for another. Rather, it represents a triumph for our constitutional democracy and the rule of law. The ruling reinforces the principle that in our republic, every institution, no matter how exalted, must operate within the bounds of the constitution. Mm -hmm. Now he, be he begins to appeal to the various courts. To my colleagues across the political divide, I extend the hand of friendship. The time has come for us to move beyond this episode and redirect our energies towards our primary duties. Duty serving the good people of Ghana who elected us to represent their interests. He mm. extends another to the right honorable speaker that I reaffirm my utmost respect for your office and your distinguished service to our nation. Right. Emphasis, your distinguished service to uh, our nation. And this statement came in just a few yes, hours just, ago? Yes, just this afternoon. This judicial interpretation of our constitution should strengthen, not weaken, the relationship between leadership and members of the House. 
This is very, very important. See, and, and, the, and, the, and the first part of what is on the screen there, you say his utmost respect for the, the office of the speaker yes. and his, the distinguished the service, service of Speaker Bagwin to, to the nation. The nation. That, that's a clear departure from what you, we've heard from Bagwin. But I then mean, again... When you put the two side by side. But when we progress on this conversation, mm -hmm. you begin to understand why this is very necessary, Indeed. especially when we put the numbers on the table and what is likely to happen in Parliament in the coming days. Well, too late, too, too late, better late than never. Professor Rams for Jampo is a professor of political science at the University of Ghana, Legon. Professor Jampo, you've seen this statement from uh, the majority leader, Alexander Fenyo Markin. It, it, it sounds clearly one that is, is reconciliatory, at least based on what we have seen in that statement. Is it one that would make a significant difference as things turn out now? Yeah, the point is, if he knows how to sound reconciliatory, he should have sounded this right from the word go before going to Parliament. He should have, he should have gone to caucus with his colleagues to, to let them know. You see, it is today that you are in power. Tomorrow, if you go out of power, it may be insane. And at the end of the day, it is our democracy that will suffer. And so my view is that the matter has not been resolved yet because I can anticipate and foresee um, some um, NDC mem members of parliament also saying that well, in that case there will also not be part of, of parliament to give the needed quorum for important decisions to be taken uh, for government business to run. And all these things do not order well for our democracy. And so I am thinking that if there are elderly men and women in the Ghanaian society let them rise up and let them intervene and let's see how we can uh, 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 address this matter. Otherwise, look, the matter has right. not been resolved at all. Uh, you said the matter has not been resolved at all. Dr. Rashid Draman, Executive Director of the Africa Center for Parliamentary Affairs, is joining us as well on Zoom right now. You agree with Professor Jampo that this matter, even though it's been resolved, appears legally, it is far from over? Um, yes, uh, Alfred, thank you very much for having me. Um, maybe first of all, let me uh, commend the, the majority leader for uh, his statement today, which, I mean, by all means, is a departure from earlier statements that you have played um, for all of us to hear. Um, I think this is what, I mean, we all wanted to hear right from day one. This, as we've all said many, many times, it's a political issue and uh, needed exactly what, what he is saying today. Reconciliation, you know, coming together, <laughs> uniting the country, and so on and so forth. Um, in terms of whether the matter is over or not, um, I just hope that now that the Supreme Court has um, stated clearly what its position is on this matter, I hope um, both sides, would, including the Speaker as well, would abide by the ruling, uh, even if anybody disagrees, because we are a country of rule of law. Um, maybe the NDC side might not be happy, but I think one thing that they would have to remember is that, you know, if you are a minority party, you are a government in waiting, um, and you have to demonstrate that as well in everything that you do. So much as they might not uh, agree with the Supreme Court, we only have just a few um, weeks to go uh, for Ghanaians to decide uh, who is going to lead us and who is going to be majority and minority in parliament. So in that spirit, Alfred, I hope that we will all leave the past behind us and try to come together and do the business of our country. Obviously, it's shared by Alexa Napoleon Marking in this statement, but it appears that something more than just this statement would, would have to take place in, as it were, extending the, the overtures to the other side to 
move on beyond this particular ruling. As you have indicated, it may have just been solved legally, but, but then again, they would need the other side to do business. And from the indication we're getting already, the NDC, some MPs have already started taking a position. Uh, Neil Antivanderpoi, the outgoing member of parliament for the Odododio constituency, spoke to us earlier. He had indicated that a number of his colleagues have also resolved not to partake in the business of the House if parliament is recalled because they are all looking at the elections and matters arising. I want to take a listen to him and I'll, I'll seek your thoughts on this. This is what Neil Antivanderpoi said. It's unfortunate that um, the Supreme Court will give a verdict like this when it's so obvious to every Ghanaian that this particular issue do not really need any interpretation because black and white, any classic child can interpret, can just read it and understand. But they decided to have an interpretation. And for the their interpretation, if you, if you do random sampling of many Ghanaians, they will tell you they are not happy with the Supreme Court's decision. We don't care about the ruling of the Supreme Court. We will respond to a call by the Speaker of Parliament. And we will sit down and evaluate that call, look at the timing, and see whether it is convenient for us to take that decision to leave our consciences and come and sit down in Parliament to do government business. I can say this is the decision of many of us on our platform from the discussions we've had so far since the verdict came out. Majority, close to 99% of us, have decided not to respond to any call. Well, so, Dr. Asitaban, there you have it. What then has to be done beyond this statement? Because it's clear what uh, Neil Antivanapo is saying there. Well, I think, um, you know, uh, tempest might be very high now. I mean, this is an emotional issue, Alfred, and I can understand uh, you know, the position of the NDC. But I think in this matter, uh, I would hope that they will let Ghanaians be the, the judges in, in this matter, uh, particularly as we get to uh, December 7. Uh, I believe all these are going to contribute to the way people will decide in terms of when they have the ballot uh, in their hands. Remember, Alfred, um, we had two instances where the stakes were even much higher than this. Uh, when um, the current president went to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court ruled against him, he said, I disagree, but I respect the court's uh, ruling. The country moved on. Uh, the former president went to the court. The same thing happened. He disagreed with the court, uh, but, you know, accepted the verdict of the court. Um, I think that is how we should behave as Democrats. And I think that um, even the right honorable speaker, when uh, I believe he recalls parliament, uh, perhaps we might hear him say, his reading is different from the Supreme Court, but he accepts that. So I would appeal to the NDC, let Ghanaians be the judges uh, in this matter. Um, we have just about two weeks. Um, let them come to the house. Uh, let's see if the numbers are there um, so that whatever business that is left, that they can, um, you know, consensually... Um, work on, let them work on it, and, uh, and let's um, end the tenure of this eighth parliament in peace. And then on December 7, um, Ghanaians will decide whether the NDC will be majority or the MPP will be majority. Your time. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Executive Director of the Africa Center for Parliamentary Affairs. Coming up next, let's take the theme on this matter briefly. Um, as, as we're getting to the implications of this particular decision. That's coming up next here 
on Ghana tonight. And we'll get into why this is of matter in the implications of this particular decision by the Supreme Court. Um, that's coming up next here on Ghana Tonight, and especially when it comes to the issue of government business and matters arising, that is our focus uh, quickly. Dennis Pobre, why is this really uh, of importance? Well, so, like I mentioned earlier, if the cracks are not um, patched properly, what it means is that if Parliament is recalled, whether by way of emergency recall or if they think that the issues have been resolved enough for them to return to the House, they will need the numbers from the other side. That's because the question of quorum would always arise for Parliament to either um, be adjourned or for them to do business. Now, when it comes to the quorum in Parliament, you have one for sitting and then one for decision making or for voting. If mm -hmm. it has to do with sitting, the provision is Article 102 of the 1992 Constitution, which right. talks about quorum of Parliament. Now, it says that a quorum of Parliament, apart from the person presiding, shall be one third of all the members of Parliament. This is easy to get because when mm -hmm. you do the calculation of 275 members of parliament, you are looking at 92 MPs. So with 92 MPs in the house, they can have a quorum to sit. Where the challenge comes is where they have to vote or to take a decision. Now that you find that in Article 1041 of the 1992 Constitution. And it mm -hmm. reads that, except as otherwise provided in this Constitution, matters in parliament shall be determined by the votes of the majority of members present and voting with at least half of all the members of parliament present. This is where the challenge is. Mm. For there to be a decision, you need at least half of all the members of parliament present. Half, we are looking at 138. Now we know the composition of parliament. As it stands now, per the Supreme Court ruling, is that you have 137, 137 on each side, and an independent candidate who is doing business with the MPP. Right. So the MPP side or group can marshal 138 members of parliament to come and do business and actually vote. Okay. That's if they are able to mobilize all, all the 138, including those who have already made their intentions known that they want to contest either as independent candidates or on the ticket That's of the MPP. That's Morrison, Kujua Asante, Asante. And, and then, then uh, also Mr. now Andreas Yama. Yes. yes, he's with them. Indeed. So essentially, if the MPP, I mean, sorry, the NDC decides not to take part in parliamentary business, then for the MPP to succeed, in doing business and taking a decision. They need all the members of parliament in the house. And that's if they're going to be able to do that. Because yes. that's also is... been another issue that Martin Pepe has been talking about. Yes. The inability of uh, the leadership of the MPP to marshal all their members right. to attend to the business of the house. Because look, we have 24, technically, 24 days to this election day, December 7, and their focus is there as well. They're doing some work in their constituencies, but we'll see how things play.